Good day, Revivers. I'm Dr. Justin Lin here at Rehab and Revive Physical Therapy. It's a special time of the year and it's baseball season. We've got a full lineup ahead of 162 games, especially during this crazy time and period of our life. So I'm excited to watch our favorite players go underway. And of course, we would love for them not to get injured. So this is for some of you major league ball players out there who are suffering, but it's also for the rest of us recreational ball players who are starting their spring seasons and especially baseball. We want to talk about elbows. You probably saw the title where it was interested, whether either to prevent it or to rehab yourself. So we're excited to give you the best information and what you can do to take care of yourself next. Stay tuned. Before we actually talk about the elbow and all its important components, we have to know why we even have an elbow. I think the most important thing is that the elbow provides ability for us to hinge, bring things closer to our mouth for food, and that's the bare basics. Now, if you imagine if you're in the hunter-gatherer days and you're throwing the spear for a woolly mammoth, that's gonna be pretty cool. You need that perfect motion and that's the whipping action and that creates that torque and the ability to kind of stabilize and aim. And that's the cool thing about the elbow. But you need to understand the nuts and bolts. And really it's all about the things that surround the elbow, all the different bones and all the different joints that really go with it. So it's not just three or four joints, it's actually nine. So that's something big you want to think about. So if you really think about what the elbow is, it, it comprises of the humerus, the bottom part. You have your radius and you have your ulna, which is all right here, three different bones. So it, what you have to think about is that the humerus goes all the way up and actually connects to a couple other things like your shoulder blade, like your collarbone. So you got to think about that. It's important that that's stable and that way you can provide a better whipping, torque and better aim. So we've got shoulder videos. You should check those out. We'll post some things below in the description. And obviously we've written a lot about the shoulder and including the elbow. We're actually gonna write a blog about this as well. So check that out. So then what you wanna do is you wanna think about the, the actual wrist. Imagine if this was just like stapled shut or bolted down, you're gonna to have to change your angle for better aim and you're probably not gonna get that perfect whipping action, whether it's a spear or baseball. So let's get to why we have elbow problems, why were they created? They didn't just come up from nowhere. Something had to happen where there was a breakdown in your chain of your throwing pattern. You have to understand that it all starts at the shoulder. The shoulder itself, as I've said before, is like a ball and a saucer, like a little dish, and it's being held together by important rotator cuff muscles. So we're gonna have to address that. Then, of course, it's the faulty throwing mechanics. I always think of you know, some of my favorite players, but they got some funky motions like Alex Wood. You can imagine, he's had shoulder, he's had elbow issues. Um, Clayton Kershaw, one of my favorite uh, Dodger pitchers of all time, I mean, he's just setting himself up over and over, he's fighting his own mechanics that really hurt, but that's just that's just who he is and that's his mechanics, you can't change it overnight. And then you have bad habits, you know? I bet, you know, just out there, just watching Clayton Kershaw's movements, he sleeps on his left side. Imagine that all the time. He's a left-handed pitcher sleeping on his elbow and his arm in bed and in bad posture. I can see that when he's going through his motions, very stiff in his ribs. Kershaw with another 0-2. So you can imagine how all those things shift. And then of course, your repetitive stress, being over and over, throwing over and over the same motion. And if it's unstable, you can imagine, it's like standing on one of those BOSU balls. And you know, that's really important. You need something locked down and it's like a perfect like pitching machine, almost like that. Just has a stationary part here and just whips it through and that's what needs to be addressed. So these next four exercises are gonna be exciting and it'll help you prevent any elbow issues, so stay tuned. So let's get to our first exercise. Let's talk about how to save your elbow. So the first one is that elbow plie. It's a great exercise I learned from one of my mentors, so we're gonna use it. So let's get started. So if you got your hand here, 
you ideally want this to, to face the camera or the, and so a lot of us have issues getting there. So what you can do is you can use a little pincher grip here and you're gonna either, I can turn my body around it or I can use an actual motion like I'm smashing a pie and then you know in someone's face. Um, didn't get to do that with my wife uh, with the cake but um, she did it to me instead maybe on an anniversary or something but you want to get through that so you want to basically hold that in place and rotate and that's the goal so you sometimes you might get a click or a pop so you want to just take that until it starts opening up opening up in a perfect world you can see that there's this bone it doesn't actually stick out that's that radius so that's the goal is to really get rotation back into this because this will change your your elbow mechanics right away. So the next exercise, you wanna get right into it. Uh, it's actually wrist. We talked about how the wrist can really alter your whole mechanics of your throwing. So you have all these, you got 10 of these carpal bones you gotta take care of. So we like wrist mobilization and how you're gonna start that, set that up is you find a table as well. You use a key grip, which looks kind of like this. You're holding a key and you're stabbing your poor wrists right here. So you can see in a perfect world, you get two lines. They're two happy faces, what I say. If you kind of lose it, if you can see right here, there's no line. Um, in a perfect world, there's that line that goes right across. So that's usually a dead area or an area that doesn't move well. You use that key grip, you jam that right in there and you can find whatever angle. I like to kind of use a clock motion or a circular motion to find the area that's painful. Uh, it's right there for me. So I just kind of use my legs, sway in and out till it starts freeing up. And that's gonna be, takes about a minute or so. Um, you don't want to have any numbness or tingling. You can also do what I'm doing here with the bottom hand, kind of helping assist in that way too. Good. Now, let's, so let's see, check that again. Ah, do you see that line's coming through? So now you can see this this guy needs some help. So, oh, here it is. Found it again. So it's a different angle, but something really important, especially for those of you who do like yoga and push-ups. This is really key. So in a perfect world, like you said, now I can get that elbow a little bit more forward, and I still need to work on this, but. This is something that's key. Let's see the right side. So you should be able to, this side's a little bit better, but also needs a little key. Basically, if you have too much of this forearm bulge here, it's really gonna prevent your ability to rotate through your forearms. So this is a key, keep improving that. You can do the elbow plie, you can do the wrist mobs. That's the goal is to get that twist and that torque in your forearm. Now, the next key is actually you want to do something called the C's and the G's, right? So the C's and the G's is basically you create letter C with your hand like this. And then the G is just you doing this. You kind of like there. So you want the right there. So C and G, C and G. So C and you create that claw, it's a G. So C and G. Now what's really key here is you want to get the intrinsic hand muscles right here. So C and G, you wanna basically pull, if I had a ball right here, all I'm doing is pulling that in and you're gonna feel that. If you feel a lot of forearm muscle doing this, you're not doing it correctly. This is incorrect. Your goal is to relax this as much as possible. So in a perfect world, you know, this, you might feel it deep in the forearm, that's okay. But over here, C, G, C, G. You do this till you get tired pretty much or your fingers cramp. Um, which could be hundreds of repetitions, but that's how you can grip the ball a little bit better and get that ball moving. So that's gonna be the key. So what you're gonna need for pronate terrors is a lot of you who have the pain right now, you wanna make sure you avoid it. Um, so really the key is uh, you don't wanna put a lot of weight. You don't wanna have any pain doing this exercise. But the most important thing is you take this, you either find a platform like this and you can see right here it's just being able to hold it and you can see my forearm it's not really engaged some of you at home it's engaged so what you want to do is slowly turn that down and then you're gonna come back up 
slowly turn that down and then you're going to come back up now some of you are shaking and stuff like that but it's always good to see your unhurt side and you can see how easily that turns so this is pronation here of our hand a rotation of our hand forearm so pronation you hold it and it gets tired this is you want to build that endurance you'll feel burn right in here so in a perfect roll it's just this perfect plane cutting through and you hold and then you kind of relax and then you can do repetitions of this for about a minute or two now this is the key of course we talked about shoulder as well but this is just more exercises for the elbow we have great exercises for the shoulder and you can also watch our other vlog or discussion about shoulder and baseball like i said this is great exercises are these four top exercises i give for people who are either rehabbing prehabbing for their elbows getting ready for their preseason or middle of their season so for these four exercises you're gonna do them until you feel burning or soreness you want to go a little bit past into it but that's what makes this great it's all about building that endurance nice throw doc so hopefully you had a chance to try these four exercises definitely make sure that this is something your healthcare professional would approve but i think they're great so give it a shot make sure you're doing it and trying it especially before you start your mechanics or start your spring season and you do it before your practices i think it's a great way to get your elbows stronger get it more mobile and that's the key to your success for a healthy elbow now we're really excited. We've got other things coming up regarding different sports, including more baseball topics. So stay tuned. Uh, if you want, we have all these links below for blogs and definitely more videos. So check those out. We've loved all your support this year and this past year. And keep that up. Keep passing these, these videos along to other people. So leave any feedback. If you've given, a shot, given these exercises a shot, please leave a feedback. Yeah. I'm Dr. Lin. Remember, we heal smarter, not harder.